Okay, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, so it's time to be back in the basement working on clocks. And here we have a Sessions kitchen clock. Okay, package inside. So that we've got some corner pieces. And we got some case repair to do somewhere. Case is pretty. Looks like somebody paint, repainted it. It even runs in it. We'll have to kind of clean it up. Pendulum. Looks like here's a broken suspension spring. And here's a suspension spring. Probably replacement. Key. So, let's get the uh, Container, pin, washer, huh, two washers, and minute hand, hour hand, okay, pendulum in here, suspension springs and key in here. movement. Like I say, it's an alarm movement. Let it run down. Okay. That screw is gone. What on earth? <laughs> oh my. That's the goofiest. Instead of fixing the hole, there's a screw here. Actually, it's not a screw, it's a bolt. And there's a nut on the other side holding the movement in. Okay, there's the movement, there's the nut, and so we got a whole bunch of holes in there, we're going to repair those, we'll take the alarm movement out later, and clean that up. Okay, on the strike side. Feels like it's frozen. That's pretty stiff. I don't know. And basically, I'm just gonna. Whoo! Yeah, look at that. Prick punches around those. You see what I'm talking about? Huh? See where somebody is punched here and punched. Boy, what the heck is that one? I used a great big punch on that one. Big punch and some little ones. More prick punches here. They weren't even very good at doing that. They were close enough to close the hole. Here's some more prick punches here. And they didn't get close enough to the hole to close it up anyway. So all they did was deface the movement. So uh, let's take a look. Now that's interesting. The, uh, that's not a Sessions movement. Uh, I 
Lance and Ingram. November 11th, 79. And that's an Ingram. E. Ingram. Okay. I'll contact the owner and tell him that that dial isn't original to the to the clock anyway. I'd really like to put one on that looks a little better than that anyway. So you see it's pretty greasy. I'm gonna drop it into a, a ultrasonic cleaner and just clean it, rinse it off, then we'll tear it apart. And we'll just let that do a rough cleaning. some repairs to do. Here's the escape gear with its lantern pinion. And you can see some grooves worn in those so they're going to have to be replaced you can't have can't leave that like that oh my here's the governor and its pinion. And you can see quite a bit of wear on those trundles. So they're going to have to be replaced. Pinions. Holy mackerel, what in the heck is on this one? Oof. I have no idea what this is. Something encrusted on here. Whatever it is 
hard as a rock. You can say the pivots don't look bad and this particular lantern pinion doesn't look bad but boy what is that crud that's on there pretty nasty check that out mercy sakes oh it was hung up on the pin Whew. man Oh, I wonder if that was soldered. It sure was. Ah. Yeah. Probably had a a loose. The shroud was probably came loose. They may have been replacing pins and then decided that the way to secure them back in was to put solder on it. So we're going to have a mess to clean up there. That's pretty nasty. Now we gotta use the spring winder. Let these down and get these springs off of here. Okay, the let down key for this goes in here. And this goes on here. There's a pivot. out and there we are that one's all let down okay. wheels are free springs are free now we can clean there's the dial that I'm hoping we can replace because it's a sessions dial in an Ingram case. There's the springs. 
there's the main wheels. There are the gears for the time side and motion works. The two plates back and front and the gears and levers for the strikes. I think you can just see from appearance. I don't even have to tell you what's wrong here. But I was going to clean up that shroud on that lantern pinion. And when I turn this on... It kind of says something about the condition of that arbor. I'm going to afford a nice set of collets. Okay, put it on the arbor out here. That's a tad bent. The so first thing we've got to do is work on straightening that arbor. Okay, I determined the long part of the arbor was the one that was bent and was so I put a center drill in the tailstock and I lined it up and what I'm doing is just I have tapped on that tiny tiny bit at a time that's about as close as we can get it Clean that up a little bit. It looks like somebody used a horrendous amount of super glue or something on that on that shroud. But the trundles on this one aren't bad. So anyway, it uh, a lot cleaner than what it was. At least it's straight now. Okay, here's the one that had all that solder all over it since the trundles are in good shape I didn't remove I just cut all the solder down I didn't take it all completely off the trundles are still on the end of the shroud are still covered with that solder but at least we get it cleaned up and it's looking okay much better than what that looked like before here's a the governor you can see the lantern pinion wires are worn in that so we're gonna get those out of there and replace them now to get those wires out of there I'm just gonna use a little drill bit and a pin vise and then glasses off and then I'm going to these are in here they're cut away where they've Take those over. And that way, once you've cut that away, you can just push those pins right out, like so. Then I'll cut new ones and put them back in. And then we'll use a carbide bit. And a scriber once we get the new pins in to push 
brass back over the hole to keep them from falling out. And that's uh, so I approach that repair. And what we do is we take the pins from those. Uh, here's one where I've taken all of the pins out. The shroud is still there. And now what I got to do is I got to find out what size the wires are. So I use a caliper. See if I can find an unworn end of the wire. And that looks like one, about 1.1 millimeters. I've got all kinds of pieces of wire here. That's, this is marked 1.45 millimeters. 1.90, 1.05. Okay, we'll take a look at that. 1.15. Okay. 1.2, 25, 1.1. Yeah, 1.1. That's what we said, right? There's 1.10 millimeters. So that's going to be the pivot wire that we're going to use. We will put the rest of these back into the drawer. Drop stuff all over the place. Let's see what these wires are. Oh, there's 1.1. 1.1, that's good. And that's silver colored, so maybe I'll use it instead of this. Okay. Now I've got this cutter here. And I can put this in here and uh, I can use this gauge. Establish the length. Put a piece of cloth around it because it's going to fly. Cut it. I need. So that's two, four. I need one more. I need six total. Nobody left them when I picked up the, took the clock back the other day. Anyway, that's going down in there. And up the hole on the bottom. Push the pin in. Okay, there's three of them in. Push down. There's four. And the last one. You see it halfway in. Push it down. Okay, and there, there are the new trundles, as they're called. Now we just gotta close the top so they don't fall back out. There's my magnifier. And this is a carbide. 
and if I get down here to each hole and just should be able to keep those from coming out now. Just push a tiny little bit of brass over the hole. Okay. So they vary a little bit. I have cut seven of them. Let's use this to <clears throat> measure out from the center of the cutter and then line the piece up before I cut it. And seven to go into this one.
six. the movement with all of the lantern pinions fixed and now the next step is to do any that need bushing. All right before the bushings are done every wheel has to be put in here and polished. Burnishing stick, a little oil on it. And we burnish each one of those. Every pivot is done so that they're nice and shiny and we have nice shiny pivots once we have the pivots polished then we put the wheels back in one side at a time in this case this is the run side and we do a check to see what is going to have to be bushed except we're going to need a bushing here and I mark you know which way the you wind it this way so the spring is going to be turning the wheel this way which pushes this wheel this way and the wear spot is on this side mark where the good side is so that when I go to bush what I'll do is I'll first cut in the direction of the unworn side to even out the wear so that when I drill that hole out it'll uh, it'll self-center. The patent date on this is uh, 1879 uh, 78 and 79 so it's uh, it's before the it's was made in the uh, 19th century so Okay, so there's a bushing in place. Another bushing in place. Another bushing in place. And another bushing in place. Some of the marks like on that one are from somebody else that tried to close up the hole by using a punch on it. Instead of doing it the right way. Now these have to be size to fit. Okay, so we have a called a cutting brooch. It's a five-sided cutting tool. And because the bushings that I have in here have an ID, a bore, of 1.25 millimeters, the uh, Escape gear, that's this one, has to go up to 1.3. So we're going to take this brooch and we're going to put it into that bushing. We're going to rotate it and that's cutting out. The sound in the background is a heater, it's cold down here tonight. That's cutting out, so we're cutting out just a tiny little bit and then we see if this fits we have to go a little more not sure yet okay go a little bit more okay broke from both 
both sides. inside that's a tight fit okay. that should do it and we're gonna have to have a tiny bit of oil on that smoothing brooch smoothing brooch in there. It doesn't really cut a lot. Kind of what it does is just uh, takes any burrs out. Uh, more than anything and most important of all really kind of burnishes the inside of the bushing and it also work hardens it. So that uh, it'll wear a little longer. Okay, we should have a, a nice fit now. And I never get that in there. Okay. That's good. That's just a tad tight. Cutting brooch again. Smoothing brooch again. That fits much better. Okay. Now I put the wheels back in of the run side we just did. And we pull on it the way the spring will run it. And the only one we have to mess with yet is this number one. Definitely needs to be bushed. Number two, three, four, and the escape wheel. There's no jumping around anymore. Dandy. So now we just need to mark the back on that so we can see what it is we need to work on when we come take them apart. Okay. Let's see. That would run that way so the original hole would be here. So we're going to file over that way a little bit to, yeah, that's definitely got, got some play in it. This one's definitely got some play in it. it looks like the original is this way. Sure wish there was a way to get the, uh, to fill in those marks from the, I'm like beating them with a prick punch. We're gonna do uh, we did those. We're gonna do these two bushings on the back on this side. And we need to round out our, we wanna to find the original center when we cut them. We gotta have uh, The original side of the hole that's not worn cut over the an amount equal to the side that is worn. So what I've got, I've got a little diamond bit and uh, these are the two and that's why I marked where the unworn side is because uh, you look in here and see there's not a whole lot 
there's a little bit, so we got to stick this diamond drill in there, the diamond bit in there. I'm going to go towards the unworn side, and then we're also going to go in here. Cut over the unworn side, and that's about right. I'm going to put that diamond drill away diamond bit away. A bunch of those. And then we will take our, since these are going to be the uh, number two wheel has got a pivot that's 1.4 millimeters and the uh, Number three wheel is 1.3 millimeters. So the bushings I have that are immediately smaller are 1.25 bore. So we've got to use these. And then we will uh, uh, broach those out to the proper size. So the outside diameter on these is 3 millimeters. And I've put a reamer in here that's 2.97 millimeters and I'm going to uh, to drill those out. This one makes me a little nervous because it's right near the edge. It's going to make it a little tough. Like somebody beat the daylights out of that. Man, they really pounded on that. Something fierce. So now this should find center by itself. So I'm going to put this in here. And I'm going to drill this out. And put it out here. Okay, got that one. The other one is down here. Move the burr of the hole and just chamfer it just a tad. And that chamfer then makes it easier to get the bushing in. And then I'll take a bushing and we put that bushing right there okay. here I oh, yeah, can use this get it started and then I've got a little stake okay that's in Another one to the other hole. And that's got a bunch of stuff beat out of it. is going to go in here. Here's number two. And it's going to be this end. It goes through there. So we have to take our brooch. We're broaching this out to 1.4 so it's got to be quite a bit. Brooch. That's cutting the hole bigger. Going from 1.25 millimeters to 1.4 millimeters. Okay, let's see where we're at there. Not even close yet. We're just about there. Okay, and we 
take our Take our smoothing brooch, put a little bit of oil on it, remove the hole. Okay, that fits now. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now the other one is this one. And that's got to be go from 1 to 5 1.3. So not quite so much. Okay, let's see how that fits now. That's good. Okay. Now I can retest fit it again. We'll set up the strike side. Strike side wheels in. And a lot of play in number one. A lot of play in number two. A lot of play in number three. A lot of play in number four. And a lot of play in the governor. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten bushings. Every one of them needs bushed. Okay. It's a lot of bushings. A lot of bushings. Okay. So it's so we can remember where these are. Number one. Number two, we'll put the dots on the front. Number four, so I know which side faces out. And so we're ready to start taking apart and setting bushings. First thing is I take the fronts, what we're doing, number one wheel turns out to be four and a half millimeters. Uh, number two wheel looks like 1.52. 1. 1. 1.52 millimeters. Maybe it'd be by with a one and a half millimeter job on that one. Number three. Is 
1.28 okay it's going to be 1.25 number 4 1.28 same thing and the fan is my diamond Fan and that's up. Okay, and this one is going to be down. Oh, it's going to be up as well. The other one is over here. Okay, that evens out the wear. So that now when I use my <clears throat> when I use my uh, reamer, it's going to center and be in true true center. So I'll put the reamer in. I'm going to ream out those three. three bushings in there. There are three. This one's got to take a little bigger one. So now we have to uh, rotate these out to fit. And the fan is going to be 1.25. As you hammer those in, they're going to be uh, too small. So I got to take my brooch.
plates are so thin, they are somewhat distorted, so we may have some straightening to do. got to do is do the same to the back. We've got all the all these bushings to do. One, two, three, four, and then the big one. And those will probably be this, about the same as the front. With the front done. That's looking mighty good. That'll be the way it runs. Yeah, looking real good. Get it all done, it's going to run fairly quiet, too. Get it all done, I'll run another 100 years, and i got to do something with this middle, too. Boy, somebody pounded the daylights out of it, too. It's all scarred up. So I'll be drilling that out and make a new bushing for that, too. That's for the center hole. 16 bushings on that movement we put in. And I'm about done. I'm getting tired. I think it's time to quit for the night. We'll come down and do the backside tomorrow. That's enough for tonight. Okay, it looks like the last thing we need to get done. You can see where somebody pounded the daylights out of that and didn't wasn't very effective. Anyway, where the our, our pipe comes through the plate, the cannon pinions on the back. But anyway. You can see how loose that is. That's really, that's pretty bad. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll bush that up and uh, make that a little tighter. Probably the easiest way for me to do that is to, uh, this is such a large one, is to use a step drill and drill this out see what the full steps are. Just take one of the full steps. It'll make this a little bit bigger, maybe a couple millimeters bigger. And then we will, probably four millimeters, two millimeters per side. So increase the diameter about four millimeters. And then uh, cut a bushing on the lathe, just slightly bigger. Press it in and uh, see how that works. We have now rebushed the back of the center drill or center wheel and made a bush for the center wheel in the front. This was all banged up in here, so anyway it doesn't flop around anymore. I guess we're about ready to put this thing back together. Okay, I've got to lubricate these springs, and this stuff works pretty well. So we'll 
give it a try here. I'll make a patch. And okay. Put that on there. Take the spring. Start wiping that on here. put these back into the into the main wheels and we'll put them on the spring winder and we'll crank these up and down a couple of times and this one if you look at the hook you know that's got to crank this way look at the spring click spring you also see it can go that way so put this in here. You now with the spring winder we can now wind and then we can reverse it. three times make sure that the lubricant is evenly spread and we get a restrainer crank this back up again until we can get one of these clamps on up, take this bag off, and our spring is now reinstalled, one spring, ready to go back into the movement. We got another spring here, take the loop, put it on a post, in here, bring this forward into the let down key. Let me try again. again and now we'll 
let her back down again. Okay, so we will wind her back up. Another spring retainer. And crank this up. Retainer on. I always feel a little more comfortable once those are in place. Uh, I like to see these things cutting loose. Crank it down until it's safely contained in the spring retainer. Yeah. Okay, we're done. Open this up. Okay, we'll let go now. Okay, slide that off. And everything seems to be just fine. And we've got the other spring all bound and ready to be installed in the movement. Okay. Oops. Never get that cut wheel on there. This is here.
these six cents for these with these pins. Hard to get those things to line up. Alrighty. We got everything in there. I'm going to put springs back in place, but. Okay. That's going in there. And I don't know where we go from here. locked. Okay, it's just still going to take some work because I think the uh, anchor that's in here is not the right one. I think it's the wrong size. I got to try something else. No matter what I mess with this, either locks up or it's skipping teeth. It's real, real touchy. So we gotta we gotta mess more with that. Uh, see if I can't find another anchor, another strip pallet to work in here because something's something's not quite right with this one. Test running after a lot of messing with the escapement obviously somebody had replaced the escapement in it and now we'll let it run so here's the dial and it's a mess. It's been painted. Yeah. Somebody tried to redo the numbers on it. It's not even the right dial. It's a Sessions. It's an Ingram clock. So we're going to replace that paper dial. And uh, I'm also going to scrape off all the paint that's on here. We'll be using a knife. It's really rough brass paint. I'll also be using steel wool and uh, I can't work with this camera in front of me so I'm not gonna show that just a minute. Okay here's the dial. Just put the, uh, took all that paint off. I used a gilt wax to recolor color the bezel and then uh, that's a printed dial and uh, it's been aged with a little bit of acrylic paint I made it nice and wet and then I thinned down some tight bond glue and used a wet piece of cotton to wet the pan and then laid the wet dial on top of that so when that all dries and hardens then I will cut out as you can see there's a center hole in the and then the winding holes uh, cut those out with a razor and we'll have a dial ready to go and in the meantime I have just taken out the alarm and 
and that's the alarm mechanism and as you can see it's pretty dirty and uh, I think what I'll do is I'll put that into the ultrasonic cleaner and see how it looks and we'll take it apart clean it put it back together and it'll be ready to go well for this essentially what I did was wound this up held this till I get a zip tie on here and then just let it go it unwinds zip tie holds it in place and we're in essence putting a doing the same thing with this as we do a, the clock movement it runs down give it some more it's not going anymore now that's safe to take this apart and uh, without hurting ourselves okay, get that apart so this goes on top and then this okay, and then our, and our spring screwed okay okay that unscrewed this comes off maybe And we're just going to clean this up the same way we would any other clock movement. And, all back together. There we go. Okay, now let's get some pins. Wind it up. Cut the zip tie. to do is take this off the back, save that, I'm supposed to put this down like so. Get that centered in the glass. And I think what I gotta do, I'll be tape that down. It's not supposed to move. So we'll take some masking tape and we'll put that here. So it kind of stays in place. Okay. That says to burnish this. I don't know, have I got that on the right side? Yeah, definitely. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of wood and uh, start burnishing this. This is I'm supposed to do. You really have to proceed slowly with this. And as you lift, you can kind of see where there's pieces that might not have, see there's a tiny little spot right there. So if I go back, go over it, another one there. like I got it all. Really just have to take your time. And if you're lifting that off, make dang sure that you got it all. Definitely got to tape that piece down as you lift it off. You can see it then. Okay. Okay, there's the design on the glass. I don't know. I don't know how well it'll hold up. We'll have to just see, I guess. And uh, better cut some strips to hold the glass in. And uh, I redid the hinges so that they're going to fit in here real nice, be nice and clean. We'll go make the strips for that door now. Okay. Movement back in a case. Not the best light with my grow lights going down here. There she is. <laughs> 